What's up, YouTube? Uh, Hot Wheels Racer here. You guys are standing on a cheap tripod. Uh, literally cheap. One of the legs are already bent. That leg is already bent. Like, it wiggles. So, Hot Wheels Racer here, anyway. So, we're doing the review. Review, review video. We've got a still BR700. And so I'm gonna show first, I'm gonna show you everything about it. And uh, I'm gonna show you the manual, what it comes with. And, um, and then we're gonna get to it. So, um, yeah, like, subscribe, and I'll show you. So, please excuse all the wind out here where I'm at. Uh, it's been a windy day, but it's supposed to be 80 uh, in uh, January. And uh, wish me a happy birthday. Um, my birthday was on the 2nd, about a week ago. So, yeah, right here is the contents it comes with. As you can see, my, it comes with... Uh, it has the model number on it. Now, you open the bag. There's the multi-tool. This tool right here will uh, loosen up the screws if you have to take the covers, any of the covers off. And then it's a uh, scrunch. It's, just got, it's a screwdriver, a Torx, but I don't know what size. And then it's got the spark plug end to it. I call it a scrunch. So the next thing that comes with it is... Um, the book for it, which the book here, mine's just the 700, but you can see it's an instruction manual and the owner's manual. You want to down uh, and read these over. You want to sit down and read these over. The winds. You want to sit down and read these over. Uh, sit down. Uh, have a nice cold drink of beer or whatever you like to drink. Or if you're a kid, just drink your uh, Gatorade or something. But ha sit down, watch TV. Or sit down, if you have time, you could sit down. And, uh, can't sleep at night, read the book, read everything of it. So, yeah. I'm going to demonstrate to you the scrunch. Which is this. They all come with it. The 600, the 700, the 800. But I bought the 700. It's been the years. I've used it a little bit. Had it a good minute. But not forever by any means. So, uh, yeah. Be right back. Okay, so once you get that off. Uh, I took that off already. There's the winter and shutter valve. All you do is take it and turn on it. Loosen it up. You can see the picture of the snowflake. Yep, and then there's the sun. Uh, and you gotta loosen this up a little bit. And then when you're running this thing below, they recommend below 30 degrees. Take this valve and you move it there. And then you tighten that back up. But you can see it's a pain. I'm trying to get to stay up. I've loosened it too much. So I'm going to go in on it a little bit. Alright, see that? And then you can... See how it's, it's a pain it falls. There we go. It shouldn't fall now. Yeah, it ain't falling now. So you just take it and you snug it. You can probably see the engine block in there. And that allows the hot airs from the engine to breathe into the... Uh, air box here and then get sucked in by the engine and uh right up there is the it's a confusing thing i've never really this little plate right here is just kind of confused me by the way it's made but oh it breathed in right up there but it's just a cover and it the engine breathes up through here but the air circulates through here. It comes up and goes in here and then goes through the filter to the other side of this cover. And then it goes up through those holes. And 
into the engine. So that's how that works. Um, I'm gonna put this cover back on. So if you wanna watch, and I don't know if you saw me take it off or not. Well, if you haven't watched me, then here you go. So the filter goes in like this. You just grab it and push it in like that. And then you get the cover on. It's gonna be a little bit of a pain because this, I would reckon this, at one point it would be probably someone's first time to get make sure it's on there you line up the uh, you line up the screw holes and uh, get the screws started do not cross thread these they're literally they're tapping the plastic and you want to snug that down don't over tighten it. You can also use a flathead screwdriver on this. Yeah, these are only screwing in the plastic. That's why I'm saying you don't want to over tighten. Like, just go like snug it up because it'll strip and that won't be fun. So now. I'm going to show you how to start the uh, machine, which is actually pretty simple. The on-off, right here's the remote control first, the uh, controls. They're pretty simple. This right here is your cruise control. You pull that up, and it pulls the throttle however, wherever you need it. Idle. And then right there's the uh, throttle, which... Uh, for those of you that are probably like have weak hands or if a little kid's strong enough to carry one of these on their back, the throttle is not hard to pull at all. It's actually very easy. Don't pull the throttle too much. Uh, the tube adjustment. I got mine all the way in for those that people that have shorter arms. Uh, you can see right here, if you um look, you turn the tube, you can twist it. This right here is to adjust the tube. Uh, all I do is take this and you can, it's kind of hard, but you get it pulled back and then you can take this and put this wherever you need it. Now I've heard that these are pretty weak, but um, mine, if you get that click, you get the satisfying click out of it. Once you get that in there and clicked into place, you know, it's going to be good. And right here, the tube, uh, like you said, like I said, adjust this thing to whichever is the most comfortable. So I'm going to show you this tube here. It's a pain, probably a little tight. Mine was loose. You take it, you can adjust the tube in and out, you know, depending on your height. I keep mine all the way out. Because even for someone that's uh, five foot two, I'm about five foot two tall. Uh, this is all the way out. It's the perfect length. Some people might not like it all the way out, but I like it all the way out. Now I'm gonna show you how to start it. And before I show you how to start, I'm gonna show you these pads here now. These pads are actually pretty comfortable. Uh, the blower weighs about 20, 23 and a half pounds. That I was told. And uh, these, you can see these pads are pretty comfy, and they're really big pads. Very squishy, comfortable. I carry this thing around. I would go a whole day using it, and uh, it's actually really comfortable. So I'm going to show you how to start it here. So you see the primer bulb there. You want to take it. You want to prime the unit. Uh, I go for 15 times because see, it ain't doing anything. So prime it 15 times. So I'm gonna start now, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Didn't hold on. I think there's pressure in there. Yep, that's why it wasn't prime. Make sure the pressure isn't in there. So 
One, two, three. It won't prime. Hold up. Uh, it's where it's cold. There it goes. One. Just prime it. Keep basically just keep priming it as much as you think. You can prime these things until the uh, till the cows come home, and <clears throat> you're not gonna have to worry about flooding the engine because all it's doing is bleeding air bubbles out of the fuel lines and the you do have to prime these things a lot they have really long <coughs> fuel lines now I'm gonna show you the uh, choke how it works so you can see uh, that pictogram right there which means the choke is open so it'll run however you need it and then turn it this way for half choke full choke you turn it that way and now it has a semi-automatic choke which means you know once you start it and you get it and once it starts and tries to start or starts up and don't let it stall when they have it on full choke it'll almost uh it'll die in flood so you want to once it starts it's if it starts or tries whatever tries just kind of like dun, 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 or like you could hear it kind of try to start then turn this off pull it again or if you're stayed running but was about to shut off just turn this to half choke and it'll rev up you know why it the choke has throttle in it and then you hit the trigger just blunt bump the trigger and the choke pops back off so that's a handy feature that i think most homeowners or consumers are gonna like now i'm gonna start this thing spark plug by the way is under here and the gas ratio the fuel ratio is 50 to 1 and if you buy the six pack of oil uh i bought the six pack of oil and got an, a six year limited warranty so uh yeah i'm gonna show you how to start it so the on-off switch, by the way, pops back into place after you, uh, so that way you don't have to pull it and pull it and pull it. And then notice that you left the kill switch on. So I'm going to turn the choke on, prime it a couple times because I already primed it. Mine's warm already, so it's not going to... Just like that. I'm going to show it to you in action. Technology. It sound, you might be thinking it sounds like a four-stroke. It really is. It's a two-stroke engine. No, it's not. It's a four-stroke engine. It's called the Formix engine. It has better emissions and power output. Uh, it's a four-stroke that lubricates on the two-stroke gas. And every 100 hours, or for my case, every season, you want to adjust these valves. And uh, I've only had this thing for a month, so yeah, but. I'll do a, uh, in about two months, I'll do another two months review on it. So yeah, that's how it works. Um, spark plug goes under here. And these things aren't super duper hard to pull. So yeah, the, there's no, I don't really have many cons with it yet. But I have a bunch of pros. So the first pro is it doesn't require any, to, uh, any tools to adjust this right here or you don't have and it's not that hard to adjust that the second pro is the semi-automatic choke I love it it um kicks it kicks back and you hit the throttle it turns off 
And, uh, and my third pro is this thing uh, is actually kind of easy on gas. It's a gas. All backpack blowers are going to be gas hogs. This thing's not that bad. Another pro that I have is the CFM. This thing has 912 CFM at like 600 something miles an hour. But uh, yeah, so that's all I like about it. Another pro I've got is the stop button pops back off after you do after you turn the machine off. And the other pro is these straps are very very comfortable. And then the other pro is uh, this tank holds a lot of gas. I mean, a really good amount of gas. And then one, just one con I do have is whenever you gotta adjust the valves, you gotta take the air filter out, the air filter housing out. You got screws under there you gotta remove. Gotta take those off. Screw there, screw there. You gotta take all them screws out. And that's one thing that I'm not a big fan of. But, uh, it, ain't, it doesn't matter. And then the third thing, is this thing is really easy to get to the spark plug. And it's got this nice spark plug cover. So you hit it on something, it doesn't break off. And then the very last pro is how very little this thing vibrates. I mean, you can see springs in there. Look at this. With this thing idling, you can just see the whole back of it shaking. And it, to put it on your back, it's very comfortable. Uh, it does get heavy for me after a while. Some adults, it's, some of your bigger, taller adults, it's probably not going to be that bad. So yeah, overall, I rate this thing a uh, four and a half stars, maybe five. I don't know. So far, I'm going to rate it five stars. And so, if you guys want to see more of these reviews, uh, comment down below. Check out some of my older videos where I did a review of my Husqvarna push mower and my Husqvarna backpack. Because um, I've got plenty of videos on the way for those. I'm probably going to start doing some... Uh, lawn cutting videos so stay tuned and like subscribe i already said this and uh in about two months i'll do a review tell you guys how I, how much i still like it and uh see if any problems come up uh so yeah like subscribe peace out